percent sure what they do when they go away. So that's one of the questions that we're trying to answer here. Where do they go? Where are they trying to get that food? Wait, you wait, there it is. So we're turning on the satellite tag so it's ready to go. So we're going to just log on to um, synchronize with the transmitter. So one of the cool stories that we've got coming out of this project is 34.4. It's right there, Kathy. It's circling around. I'm Dr. Dominique Potvin. I am a senior lecturer in animal ecology at the University of the Sunshine Coast, and I am our resident ornithologist. So that's somebody who studies birds mostly. Seabirds are incredible. They can sleep on the wing. They don't actually have to come to land to sleep. They can float on the water if they're a little bit tired, but they are so energy efficient. Their wings are built to soar. So I've been coming to Lady Elliot since the project started back in 2020, um, and I'm kind of in charge of all of our bird work. Um, we usually uh, are here to study the red-tailed tropic birds. Um, what we're doing is we're catching them, um, we're putting bands on them so that we can know who's who and we can identify them later if we catch them again. And importantly, we're also taking things like measurements, um, a little bit of a DNA sample um, so that we can tell who's related to who, get a bit of a family tree on the island. Um, and uh, one of our major projects is putting little satellite tags on these birds so that we can figure out where they go, where they hunt for food, how, where they dive to get their fish to feed themselves and their little ones. They go through a few different stages. Um, when they first hatch, you can see that nice, cute, fluffy, they just look like tiny little fluffy marshmallows with a little black beak and little beady black eyes poking through. They're adorable. Um, then they start to go through a bit of an awkward phase where they start to lose that downy feathers. They start to lose those and they start to gain what looks a little bit more like an adult bird's feathers. Um, but unlike the adults, these feathers are mottled white and black. So they're still very much a juvenile plumage. You can tell the young ones from the adults because of that white and black. They also don't start growing those nice red tails until they're adults. So those babies, um, the baby red-tailed tropic birds don't actually have a red tail. <laughs> the parents will only come and feed the chicks, um, sometimes every couple of days. So it can be quite a waiting game for us to just keep an eye on the nests. We actually have cameras on the nest that we can check every once in a while to see if somebody's been and gone. So we have to kind of keep an eye on things. We have to wait, we have to watch, and then we have to be ready to go right away. Wait, you wait, there it is. So it's just circling. tropic bird. Um, we've just caught it after it's given its young one a feed. Um, regurgitated some fish or squid. So it's in its comfy little bag right now. We're going to check to see if it's got a tag on it already and if we've tagged it before, maybe this year or last year. Um, and then once we identify that, we can either tag it if it hasn't been tagged before or um, we can write down who it is, take a few measurements, and then we can pop a satellite tag on it um, so we can follow it when it goes out to sea. Yep, so it's white banded 200 21207. Yep. 
So one of the cool stories that we've got coming out of this project is we actually, um, the first year that we started this project, we caught a bird and we were surprised to find that it already had a metal band on it. We hadn't put that band on. So we went into the system to find out that that bird had actually been banded here on the island at that exact nest that it was nesting at um, as a chick and it was banded back in 1997. So quite an old bird, it was in its 20s, um, and it's actually now holds the record for the oldest tropic bird known, um, at least, actually I think in the world, but at least in Australia. So we're just gonna measure its wing, yeah. 51.4. Lady Elliot Island is one of only two islands on the entire Great Barrier Reef where these red-tailed tropic birds actually come to breed. You can't find them anywhere else except for Rain Island way up at the, in the northern reef. We're turning on the satellite tag so it's ready to go. You can see that it's got a little solar panel on there okay. so that it doesn't run out of battery when the bird is flying around out there. So we're gonna turn it on. Blinking, all good. This is the super strong tape that's gonna hold the satellite tag in place. I'll just get a few pieces ready. All right, so there's the neck. We want it right in between the scapula. Yeah, let's try. They've got very thick feathers. Mm. So to sort of keep it waterproof and buoyant. Okay, let me put the... One thing we're hoping to find by satellite tracking them, figuring out where they're fishing, is we're trying to figure out where in the Southern Great Barrier Reef is the most food rich. Where is this food coming from? From bottom to top. So these birds are fishing for squid and fish and other marine animals, vertebrates mostly. Um, but of course, those fish need to be eating something as well. And how does this all fit together? Where are the nutrients coming from to actually feed these fish? How is this system all integrated um, and so these birds are just part of this system and we're trying to figure out you know how does this relate to the currents that are in the area and how much capacity does this area have to support more bird life if this is necessary So this is our master station, so we can uh, use this as a little antenna to communicate with the devices that we put onto the birds. So we're going to just log on to um, synchronize with the transmitter that we just put on this bird here. So if it flashes green, we have a connection to that transmitter and we can go on and download the data. So understanding why these birds have chosen this island and where they go to actually get their food around this island will help us understand how this island system works as a whole in terms of not just the birds and the fish, but also the plankton, the nutrients, the algae, and everything that is a part of this amazing Southern Great Barrier Reef. It's just amazing that we can come here and it's just so full of life um, and so full of questions to be asked and that can be answered. This is a scientist's dream to have somewhere that you can come to and just um, focus on the work, focus on the questions and just be immersed basically in something that you love, the biodiversity of the Southern Great Barrier Reef um, and for me, the amazing bird life that you can find here. Bye.